Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Equilinox. In the last episode, we finally mutated some of our very first trees to help us build this cute little fall forest. And now on the very opposite side of our grasslands, we actually have these purple birch trees sprouting up. I guess this was some sort of random mutation. Some of you have said that some of the colors we can receive from those events aren't even things we could get in the normal game. So we have to make sure that this thing survives, and luckily it looks like they are sprouting up brand new little trees in the process. So the circle of life is continuing onwards, but I want to make sure that they have plenty of room to grow. So I think what we'll probably want to do to start them off is plant more grass over here. That way they'll have more room to spread their roots. And so even if we're paying attention to other biomes today, we'll still be able to rest easy knowing that these things won't be dying off anytime soon. So we'll go ahead and place some more grass tufts right up here on the hilltops, and we'll cross our fingers that it spreads in time. Now while all of that is growing, I wanted to go back into our tasks menu. Apparently, the forest that we were trying to grow requires a certain type of plant, and we need to unlock that first. And I believe you guys said that we need to complete this diversify task. You can now start to breed more species from the current plants and animals that you have in the world. Use the evolution system to unlock new species and add more diversity into the world. If you're not sure what to evolve next, check the progress tab in the toolbar for some inspiration. So this task wants us to evolve the buttercup species and to evolve three new species of plants, which is basically what we're doing. One of the species we evolved was that red maple, and I guess the other one was the wheat. After we do all of this, we're going to unlock the rosemary plant, and you guys have said that this is what we need to plant to actually create those forest biomes. So the last species we could evolve, I guess, is the buttercup, and that would actually take care of both of these tasks. So I'd imagine that we need to focus on one of our flowers next. Surely we still have a couple of these little daisies poking around. Let's see if maybe this is the one. Yeah, we can make the buttercup from the daisies. So basically, we just need to change its color over to yellow. So if we pick out one of these healthier daisies, maybe that would be a good way to do it. Hopefully it's not going to be too expensive for us to change. Alright, that's not that bad at all. We could actually do that right now. Excellent! It's not very often that we see a color that we need that's actually so cheap. Oh my gosh! Another new purple birch tree? Ooh, it's starting to creep into our sheep's territory now. Well, honestly, I'm happy to see it. It looks like the tree that we had chosen way on top of the hill, the very first purple birch tree may have passed away. Now I wonder if we just click the Selective Breeding tab, if that'll make sure that this thing continues to spread. I vaguely remember reading that this would help us even if we don't change anything, so we'll see if that works. This tree doesn't have that much longer left in its life anyways, so hopefully we can get a couple more saplings out of it before it passes. I definitely want to play around with the colors of the trees on this side of the world. Once we have more to work with, Maybe we could try to get some, like, blue trees or something. I'm not entirely sure what all of the choices are. I guess while we're waiting for our yellow daisies to pop up, we could always check out this. So what sort of colors can the birch trees turn into? They do have dark purple, but I'm not really sure that that's what this is. I mean, I guess it could be. Maybe it just went lighter on the slider, but we have cyan to choose from, like pink, lilac, and I'm sure that all of those colors would look really good together. We could have like a little galaxy forest, a little magic forest way on top of the hills for our sheep to bounce around in. We'll have to change the colors of the sheep as well if that's what we're going to do. And for that matter, if we can change this into an actual forest, I bet they would evolve into deer no sweat. So how are our little daisies coming along? I haven't received any notifications about yellow daisies. Oh, but it looks like they are popping up after all. So this one's yellow. Hopefully it has a high enough satisfaction. It looks like it does. We can actually start breeding the buttercup straight from this one. The only problem is I'm not sure if it's going to last. Oh my gosh, it's right at the end of its life expectancy. I mean, it's living longer than it was meant to, so maybe we have a shot? But we better keep searching around for some more of them just in case. Actually, it doesn't really seem like we have too many daisies around here at all. Oh, and our evolution was paused, but at least it gave us a start. I think our chickens are probably going to be in a state. 
It looks like the birch trees are creeping back into their territory. I mean, they're looking pretty happy. Maybe not George, but he's just about at the end of his lifespan anyways. Maybe they're fine with these lingering birch trees right at the very edge of their land. I wonder if the rocks are even keeping the trees from growing here. The rocks help the wheat grow, but we know from experience that some of the trees are very offended by their presence. So maybe we'll have to build like a barrier of rocks over here so the trees don't get too close. But as far as the buttercups are concerned, this time I think we're going to choose a couple of these and change all of their colors over to yellow. Thankfully it doesn't cost that much, so we'll definitely have the points to spend. We'll breed that one, and then maybe this one way over here. No, that one's almost at the end of its life too. We have to pick one that's a little bit more new or it just feels like a waste. There we go, this one's nice and new. It has plenty of sheep hopping around it too, so hopefully you guys can keep it well guarded. We'll change this one to the yellow color as well, and then we should see plenty of yellow daisies popping up. Now I don't see any more of our purple birch trees. Are you two going to be our lone purple birch trees then? I would prefer for it to stay up here. I guess we could always transplant this one. It's probably creeping into the grasslands because it's so much healthier up there though. The environment is pretty good up here, but it's certainly not as healthy as our pouncing sheep meadows. So I guess we could always spread a couple of mushrooms up here. Maybe that would help? Some little button mushrooms here and there. And why don't we actually see if we can place some daisies down here too? Another chance for us to potentially evolve that buttercup. We could even set this one up straight away so it'll breed us some yellow daisies as soon as it's grown. I think that'll look really nice against all of these purple birch trees. Like tiny little fireflies twinkling on the forest floor. Ah, oh, finally! There's our buttercup! So these must be the seeds? or the first tiny little buds. Well, we're going to place this right in the middle of all of our sheep, I think. It should probably like it right here, so they can enjoy all the buttercups, and I think that means that our diversified task should be completely done. So this is going to finally unlock us the rosemary plant, and based on what you guys have told me, that should allow us to start making brand new biomes here. So it gave us two more tasks, right? It must be these two right here an apple a day, and the woodland biome. So let's see what this one says. It must have something to do with the apple tree that we can make. Some trees and bushes can produce fruit once they are fully grown, and the fruit will periodically fall off the tree and onto the ground where it can be eaten by animals. For this task, you'll need to get sheep to eat an apple, which drops from apple trees. All right, that should be easy enough. We already know that the apple trees evolved from these oak trees, and all they were really missing was a little taste of the forest. So let's go back into our plants and see if we can learn a little bit more about the rosemary, just so we know what this thing is going to need. Rosemary is the most basic forest plant in Equilinox and can be used to start creating a forest ecosystem. This fragrant herb grows best when surrounded by trees, and while it prefers fertile areas, it is also able to grow in barren land. It cannot grow too close to water, however. Okay, so we won't be able to build any forests next to our bodies of water, which means our sheepy meadows are safe for now. Maybe instead we could place the rosemary right behind our grasslands? This area right here should probably be far enough away from both bodies of water. I would imagine that it would give it plenty of room for the rosemary to spread. Maybe this whole little valley could even be covered in trees and forests. This is where we could set up our apple trees. So it said that we can place the rosemary down straight in this barren land. It'll still be able to grow, but it probably will take a bit longer. Yeah, we don't have any trees up here right now, so it doesn't have any of its liked species. Maybe we should get a couple of trees growing first then? We'll place a few of the rosemary plants in right now, but we'll have to be quick about getting those trees in the ground too. So let's just start it off with these plain old oak trees, so we should be able to make the apple trees faster. Now this is a pretty poor biome for it so far. Yes, yeah, should we put the grass in? I hope it's not going to interfere with the forest that we're trying to make. I'd imagine it'll just probably make the land a little bit more fertile, so let's go ahead and spread this around too. We could actually take a look at our biome picker to see what it says. Yeah, the forest is coming along quite nicely. The grassland is spreading. Actually, right here, 
this would be a good spot for us to put an oak tree because it would be able to grow straight into an apple tree right away. We just need to make sure that the forest is over 10%. Actually, it looks like our rosemary might be spreading just as quickly as our grass tufts. So these aren't going to be going anywhere anytime soon. It's looking nice and green now. Surely we'll be able to plop down an oak tree. Yeah, it's looking really good. We'll put one right over here and then maybe one right on top of the hill too. It hasn't spread quite this far yet, but I think it'll still be able to survive. The environment is going to get better and better as it grows. Ah, and since this is part of a forest, it looks like the grass is a little bit deeper in color. So that's how we can tell these biomes apart. Yeah, it's much easier to tell when we zoom out. The grasslands are kind of a paler green, and the forest is deep and rich, like it's all covered in moss or something. I wonder if we could even set it to evolving straight away? Let's see what it says. Yes, I think we can. Alright, the satisfaction is good, the biome is good, we have enough points, so go ahead and start breeding that apple tree. Since this thing is so young, it shouldn't have any trouble completing this task for us. Not like those pesky buttercups. Now let's work on making this place a little bit more suited to our purple birch trees too. I just want to make sure that they'll be okay with the forest biome. The habitat says only grasslands. Alright, so maybe we don't want to turn this into a true forest. We'll want to keep it a grassland just like where our sheep are. Maybe that's why they keep creeping into our meadows. They just want some little sheepy friends to keep them company. Well, I think some guardian sheep for our purple birch forest would be a lovely idea. So after we go ahead and transplant this one too, maybe right on top of the hill here so it'll be next to all of our other purple trees. And we better do the same thing that we did to this one and make sure that we selective breed them as well. That way these normal birch trees won't be getting in the way. Oh, do we have different colored mushrooms down here? Oh, I didn't even notice when we placed them down. It must have given us a white color because all of the mushrooms down here in the grasslands are brown. That is so cool. So this little place on the hill is special all around. From the tallest of leaves to the tiniest of mushrooms and soon to be the sheep too. So I wonder if the sheep will be healthy enough to just plop themselves down right in the middle? It's not exactly the most suitable biome, but I'm sure that we could probably fix that. We'll place them down right here, drop in some more of these grass tops. And what do you say now, little guy? Do you think it's getting a bit better? Oh my gosh, his name is Griffin. How adorable is that? It's almost like it's Griffin from our Cattails series. And he's a dark little sheep too. Oh, that is perfect. He'll be the grumpy guardian of the Highland Forest. A strange chicken has been born with an unusual mutation. Is that another special color? Ooh, the chicken army is growing again. It must be one of the babies, and our species has evolved too. So as soon as we figure out which one of these chickens has a special color, we'll go play around with our apple tree. I wonder if maybe it's this one? Did you just hatch? I mean, it looks a little bit different from its parents. It's a bit of a paler color. Let's see, maybe we can see it easier if we go into the actual traits menu, because I think we can see the color from there. That does look a little bit different from the natural color. Yeah, that is definitely not on the list, but it's almost like a combination of the two. Do you think that's truly the one, or am I just missing it? Maybe it's a completely random color and it's just blending too well with the grasslands for me to see. Well, maybe once they get a little bit bigger, it'll be easier to spot. But for now, let's head on over here and take a look at our very first apple tree. So I'm sure it'll be nice and happy right on top of this hill, with all the rosemary growing around it and the grass tops. Well, its environment isn't looking great. Let's read a little bit more about it so we can see what we can fix. This tree produces apples when fully grown. The apples fall off the tree occasionally, providing food for many animals. It is a forest tree, so grows best in the forest, but is also happy to grow in woodland areas. So, as far as its habitat goes, it needs to stay somewhere in the forest. I wonder if maybe there's just not enough rosemary around here for it to count as a true forest. Maybe that's part of the problem. 
Apple trees provide the fruit, which we read before, but it also provides a nesting spot for birds. Oh, I didn't even realize we could get birds in this game. I wonder if we're going to be unlocking that next? What sort of little birds are on our list? All oh, the sparrows and the ducks. Even squirrels, too. Those actually evolve from the guinea pigs. Oh, and it shows us how we can unlock these as well. The guinea pig unlocks after we complete the woodland biome task. Oh, that's really cool. But we better place down some more of this rosemary before our poor little apple tree ends up passing away. So yeah, hopefully this will be enough to make the biome more suited. Oh, wait a second. I think it's because we don't have one of its liked species. What does it enjoy? Animals, that's the problem. Oh, we need to get some sheep in here. All right, so another group of sheep for our brand new forest. Let's see who's going to be the guardian of the apple trees. It looks like this one is a little white sheep. Oh, Walter. Walter, protector of the apples. And neighbor to our grumpy griffin too. Speaking of which, let's make sure that griffin is still alive. How you doing out here, buddy? Oh, do you have your own little family? Oh my gosh, I think he has a baby. Gatsby. Oh, aren't you adorable? And you're doing an excellent job too, because it looks like we have plenty more of these birch trees popping up now. So I guess all our trees needed was a little company after all. It just goes to show how important all of these parts are to a truly thriving ecosystem. So I wonder if we'll be able to evolve any of the other types of trees from the oak tree now that we have a true forest. We have the sycamore tree and the elm tree here too, and I'm pretty sure that was part of the woodland biome task. Start unlocking some more woodland plants using the evolution system. Oregano can be unlocked by evolving the grass, and the woodland trees can be bred from the oak tree. Use these plants to make a nice woodland biome in the world in preparation for some woodland creatures. And that's of course how we unlock that guinea pig that we saw before, so that's going to be pretty exciting. We need three elm trees in the world, three sycamore trees, and four oregano. So let's see what the oak trees need for the sycamore tree first. Oh, we just need some flowers. Oh my gosh, then we could start evolving that straight away. Well, don't mind if I do. Maybe we should place down some buttercups over here. We have plenty of daisies over by the grasslands anyways, so we'll let this place be different. Can the apple tree evolve anymore? No, it looks like that tab is completely gone. We only have the traits tab and all of the actions that we can take. Oh my gosh, and a brand new baby guardian. Skylar, oh, the next generation of apple guardians. Unfortunately, poor Walter hasn't even gotten his first taste of apples, but it looks like it won't be that way for long. Oh, there it is, little guy. Go get your breakfast. If they munch on one of these, then we should be able to finish off that task. Oh, they are dropping absolutely everywhere. You guys see this, right? Come on over here, little one. It must be because he just ate one of those grass tops. Oh no, and they're pouncing away too. Walter's looking a little bit hungry. Maybe we should actually place a couple more sheep down here. I see that we have plenty of sheep hopping around our beautiful forest. Oh, look at them all. We need to change their colors. We have Dino, we have Gatsby. Yeah, Griffin, I think we need to get some more colorful babies in the mix too. There we go, the sheep must have eaten the apple now. Yeah, it looks like they're frolicking around the apple trees. But let's take a look at the color list. So which one of these special colors do you guys think would look the best inside this particular forest? I mean, they're going to take quite a while for us to unlock but it's something that I would definitely like to work toward. So let me know if there's a special color here that you guys think would be best. So let's see what the apple task unlocked us. We finished our apple a day, and it's going to unlock the tall tree along with two more brand new tasks. So I'd imagine that one of these is probably going to have something to do with the new tree. Satisfied wild boar? Use the evolution system to unlock the boar species, and then create a suitable environment for a family of boars to thrive in. To unlock the boar, you'll need the sheep to live in a non-grassland area where it should survive on a diet of apples. Oh, so... Walter the sheep? Might actually become a Walter the boar in just a moment. 
It doesn't look like we have enough satisfaction on it right now. In fact, this biome, for some reason, is still counting as the grasslands. I guess that's because there's more grass in here than there is rosemary. That makes sense. They're kind of fighting for the top position, though. It's going all over the place. So maybe just a couple more of the rosemary plants will do the trick. We'll place some in here next to our buttercups. Some way over here by the barren land. And maybe right in the middle, too because this seems to be where most of the grass is concentrated. But two little sheep is definitely not going to cut it, so hopefully we'll see some more baby sheep hopping around soon. It's said that we need six happy wild boar. So you have a lot of work ahead of you, Walter. Your neighbor Griffin doesn't seem to be having very much trouble. Look at all these little babies over here. Chiquita. Is that not the most adorable name? I mean, we've had some pretty adorable names, Yogi Bear, we've had Gucci, but Chiquita, that one might just take the cake. You are one seriously brave little red maple. Yeah, no kidding, your environment is bad. Oh my gosh, we better hurry up and spread some grass tufts up here then. It looks like our red maples are really trying to spread into the corners of their cliffs. I don't want all of these things to die off, and we are getting rather low on trees. Maybe they need some animals up here to help them be happy and healthy, too. I mean, at this point, all we truly have to work with are the sheep, because I'm sure that the chickens are not going to enjoy that area one bit. In fact, we might want to consider moving our chickens sometime soon to an area that would have far more vast, wide fields for them to roam. Because these trees are just creeping way too close for comfort, and I don't want to see all of our little chickens pass away. So do we have enough of the flowers around here now to start evolving our oak tree? Yes, it looks like we can make this sycamore tree now. So go ahead and start evolving that for us too. Now I wonder if we're going to have to actually get rid of these grass stuffs. It just dawned on me that we need them to have a diet of just fallen fruit. And right now, the sheep are a little bit more eager to eat the grass tufts instead. We might be able to click it really quickly, like right after one of the sheep eats the fruit. Yeah, it looks like after they grab one of the apples, that's when that task lights up. So we'll just have to keep a very close eye on all these little sheep if we want to try to get our boar. Gotta act fast in this world if you don't want everything to disappear. Now don't get me wrong, I do absolutely adore our purple trees. But I've got to admit, this area right up here on the hilltops might be the most scenic place yet. It's overlooking the water way off in the distance. And once we finally do get to forming the land around here, I bet this place is going to have the most beautiful view. So Walter and all of his babies are sure in for a treat. So with our sycamore tree nearly done, I would say in the next episode, maybe we can look forward to evolving Walter's family. The sycamore tree should help us turn this place into a true woodland and finally chip past the iron grip that the grasslands has on this land. So for now, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!